All right, my friends, how you all doing? And welcome back to the channel, and welcome to a fresh episode of our Community Zoo Build Jammy Conservation Park. And uh, my friends, this is episode eight, and uh, yeah, we've got lots and lots to crack on with today. Uh, results of polls, builds, comments, the lot. We are back to normal from today's episode. But first and foremost, my friends, if you missed last episode, uh, it was a big one. Basically, we built what you can see on the screen now, but it's linked in the episode above if you want to see how it all come to basically what we have here go check it out go get caught up but don't vote on the polls because they're done we're going to be uh revealing the results of the polls in today's episode and that's what we're going to start with ladies and gents because there's not really much else uh, to crack on with i am going to say that the entire plot isn't filled up again um i've basically just kind of done what i could um up to this point between sunday and today and uh i've got a lot done but still food for fault um food for fault food for fault and i'm gonna basically um be asking for your opinions and stuff again like I did last episode but uh, before we crack on before we get into the comments and feedback section of today's episode um, first and foremost we need to reveal the results of the poll to see if we hit that play button and move forward some years uh, you're going to see it on your screen now we're not going to be ladies and gents basically you're going to see from the comments a lot of people still feel like we've got lots to do so 80 percent of the vote said no to moving forward so we will not be moving forward we will remain on pause until we get to the live section we are going to have a live section in today's episode which is exciting as well uh, but yeah until we get to that um we will remain on pause ladies and gentlemen so um that's the results of the polls that's the introductions uh without further ado let's crack on shall we with some comments and feedback Okay, ladies and gents, so uh, for the first time in a long time, we're going to be doing feedbacks and comments with no movement in the background. Obviously, we remain on pause because we are going to be building very, very shortly. Um, and this is kind of like how we're doing it now. So we're not going to be gaining an advantage, gaining any money or any of that stuff. Uh, you will see, though, I didn't pick, on, uh, pick up on this last episode, but um, we spent about £300,000 on the gift shop ticket office entrance and the bits that we've done to this point. That is a lot of money spent when you can consider uh, what we got done and uh, we are going to probably be spending a bit more money in today's episode but uh, let's crack on with these comments ladies and gents uh, first up NASA Jack Gaming has left a comment and uh, they have said I think the reptile center should be separate to the zoo so it's like a petting zoo uh, and the other comment that they left was the big ugly wall uh, can have a logo a zoo logo if we get custom billboards a family photo of Macasas or a map of the zoo um, I'm just going to throw it out there now that I think that your first part Part of that kind is probably going to prove unpopular. A lot of people want us to have this as like dual entrances, but I am going to throw it out there because you know you've left the comment and uh, that's what we do. I am going to throw it out there for people to basically get in touch uh, in the comments section below. Do you agree with Natter Jack in feeling like they should both be separate? Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for your feedback, especially where that wall is concerned. I'm very much undecided on that. Next comment comes in from Chewy Gaming, and uh, they have said I would like to not move forward 10 years because you're have a big enough area where you could build the flamingos or the factory tropical house nocturnal house uh, if you do move forward 10 years i like the idea with the guest services so square 16 17 would be a great space for it great build looks stunning thank you uh chewy and uh, i really do appreciate your feedback as well uh, as we all know we're not moving forward 10 years now so um yeah we have got lots and lots of work to do and i think that's probably the thought process for everybody next comment comes in from ray Groot cabral and they've said put some peacocks at the entrance with elephant grass uh it was going to get more realistic um i actually really really like this idea whether or not i do that today i'm not sure because they do still need to be sort of like enclosed to some extent but i like the idea of placing that elephant grass here like sink it down low so we won't be able to see it and then the peacocks being able to like really roam free like in this opening plaza area just walk around and stuff i do really really like that idea um it will go on the list in case it doesn't get done uh today but um it definitely will be something we think about because i do really really like that comment uh next comment comes in from luke hadley uh and he has said you have good design skills dan i voted no to moving forward some years as there is much work to be done in the available space i like the idea of the flamingos at the front to the left uh part of the plaza i think it would be called cool from the plaza to a our guests to see them as a little taster 
It will add something I don't think any slash many zoos have done to set the zoo apart. Um, plus, on the zoo side, add the Flamingo Cafe. Also, where the figure eight flower bed is, I think a water feature would suit the area more with integrated statue keeping the seats uh, how you have done uh, have done them if possible. Um, where you missed that line for the long parking spot, keep the line out. It would be a nice coast pa coach parking spot uh, near the entrance. Actually, that's a really good um, that's a really good observation. That obviously we don't really have coach parking at the minute, so that would be the perfect sort of parking spot for it. Um, like the idea of potentially a fountain in here with a culmination of so a combination of like statues and stuff. Definitely need to get something in there uh, in today's episode. And I guess like what you were saying, um, you know, flamingos here restaurant here whether or not we do a restaurant i'm still not sure i kind of going to go through all the comments uh, and then decide and see kind of like what people are what people are feeling basically but great great feedback and uh, great ideas there uh, alexis doris has got in touch and said i think a big build like tropical house um first thing in the new entrance would be a little overwhelming for people arriving most zoos start with chill animals and lure the guests further in with the bigger ticket attractions if you show up and get something big immediately there's less incentive to keep going that's spend more money uh, i voted no to move before because we have uh, so much left to finish off before we can expand again so i think we should just stay chill pop in the flamingos maybe guest services uh, since there should be access uh, to that on both sides of the ticket office if a guest has a problem before they enter the park making them pay full fee just to talk to management uh, is going to get a bad yelp review uh, actually that is a really really good point but at the minute, we don't really have the space to do it any other way but to kind of go in. Maybe they could sort it out before they went into the zoo but via the ticket office. I'm really not sure. Maybe that's just um, a poor design flaw from me. But that is actually a really, really good point there. Um, but... I like that. I like that. I like your. I like what you've said about the tropical house. It kind of feeds into what I was saying uh, last episode, and it does actually become a bit of a recurring theme, as you're going to see as we read through the comments. Uh, Anton Van Dyke has got in touch and said, as we were driving up to Jammy Conservation Park, new entrance, we heard the flamingos from afar. My little nephew was getting excited. Um, while we drove up to Parking B, we could see a little sneak peek into the zoo. Small windows and peeking holes into the flamingo habitat. From the street, you were able to see the pink majestic birds. It made my nephew so happy even before entering the zoo he could adventure and look at the flamingos he couldn't wait to enter uh, local habitants love the feature too what's better than seeing flamingos while cycling to your job every day it gives everyone happiness uh, i love uh, i love what you did to the place i love the look as i suggested uh, it would be very cool to make small um, peeking holes and windows into the flamingo habitat it would lure guests into the park by the way you really have to make something to celebrate your upcoming birth uh, for the cinematic episode it would be really cool if you could make a tv ad actually i really like the idea of a tv ad for the cinematic so we will have to watch this place ladies and gents and as for the upcoming birth it's actually a really really interesting thing that you've said there and um after i read the comment i got thinking about it and i think what i'm gonna put forward to you guys if you will allow me um so just let me know in the comment section is that potentially we let my wife pick an animal and potentially help me design the habitat um she's not really like into the game like i am but she has like really started to get into it as she's been watching me do the build and stuff so maybe she could maybe have a little say in the series maybe she could pick a little animal that could go in the zoo potentially you know pick its locations or something like that uh, a bit later on but uh, yeah i really you know that's that's a really good idea about you know the passers-by potentially being able to see the animals before they get into the zoo and it's definitely food for thought um before i you know get into the build um night clive is next he has got in touch and said hi dan first of all i have to say that i'm once again blown away by the amount of detail and effort you put into this uh, here are my ideas for the next steps uh one for the wall in the gift shop actually some painting i suggest yellow would be enough uh if it's still too empty the big shopping um the big shopping would fit in there I'm not sure what that means uh, or maybe some subscribe to the dodo here advertisement advertisement might be a good idea actually uh to the empty eight shape um 
a statue would do great in there. The famous Three Monkeys, for example, uh, at the fin point, a second conservation club wall would fit. I think we have some new candidates, so uh, going to need it anyway. The rest can be filled in with hedges. Uh, the flamingos would fit perfectly in the empty space behind the gift shop and the street. Towards the street, uh, the wall can have some glass windows, so guests can have a little glimpse. Another person that suggested, uh, you know, glimpses into the habitat. Uh, for one detail about the rainforest house, for the feeling of being in the rainforest, it'd be better to implement the frog for variants along the walkway in the actual rainforest rather than in a separate room also the idea of a night section for the giant anteater sounds nice i prefer the concept of an indoor jungle with all the habit habit with all habitats frogs um BTGA, CM and Jaguar in one room. That's why I came up with the hangar first. Of course, that would need much space and take all the land to the reptile centre, uh, mostly because I also would place the restaurant and major staff hub in there. Uh, it'll be lots of work, but I'm convinced the effect uh, will make it worth it. I, I, you know what? I do agree. I kind of have this feeling that the Tropical House is going to be very South American based, which kind of feeds in that that would be all of the latest DLC that obviously came out a while ago now, but I I do kind of feel like they would all be implemented into that along with the frogs and stuff i think we could make a really interesting uh you know build there but like you say nightclive it's going to require a hell of a lot of space so maybe we can hold off on it um and five a road through the park would be a horrible idea exotic animals are to keep as far away as possible from the noise pollution uh, a road would realistically produce so i'm quite glad that someone got in touch about that because obviously i did say this last episode that you know some people wanted us to run a road up here and i just think from a couple of perspectives a design perspective uh, and even you know just from the zoo's perspective it just doesn't really work it doesn't really feed in and i'm glad that other people have kind of like seen that i'm not against you know running a road up here and so we can have enough space and still having you know bridges over i think like london zoo for instance i think the bridge um it's a tunnel actually when you go through the entrance to go to the african area you have to go down under a tunnel and it takes you down near to the canal part of the zoo see it, it is it is something that happens but obviously london zoo is like really stretched for space it's a very small area in regent's park so um you know they kind of had to make the most of a bad situation and we don't really but you know i'm not a, totally against the whole road thing but like nightclub said i am against it when the road is going to be so close kind of like to the zoo so good to see somebody else um you know picking up on that uh louis got in touch again um i voted no i'd like to see tropical house along the entire left side and flamingos on the bottom i agree on the fact that another restaurant isn't necessary i would put a sign in the eight shape oh i wouldn't put a sign in the eight shape flower bed uh but rather a statue because a few meters back uh, where the welcome sign is uh would be far better to place uh for the zoo sign to keep up the series yeah t totally sort of agree uh, i don't really think a sign is going to fit in here and louis is kind of picking up on the fact he thinks flamingos here and uh, potentially tropical house all the way along here but um yeah as we go through the comments i think we're kind of i've got to avoid the tropical house for a little while uh ladies and gents uh sander neeland's been in touch uh first of all amazing work it's stunning love the style completely understood the delay nothing to worry about was a hell of a job uh summed up my recommendations uh one wouldn't fix the large parking spot um can be parking for a spot for buses i don't know for england but netherlands schools like to visit zoos sometimes and uh, uh a bus is the perfect way of traveling for schools yeah but somebody else has picked up on that point as well so you know really just kind of like fantastic of people to really be you know taking note of that uh the empty wall the gift shop could be the next sponsor slash community well that's quite an interesting use of that space um i actually don't mind that at all uh, the empty eight shape uh, could contain a plaque with the history of the park and the rest could be filled up with plants. That's quite cool as well. Um, maybe, you know, but in Amsterdam, you had the big I Amsterdam letters. Um, maybe you could do that with Jammy as well. It is a social media promotion that runs itself. That's that's actually really cool. That's really, really cool. Uh, I would love to see the flamingos in the space between the entrance and the road. It would be viewable from the inside and outside. Someone suggested peeking holes for the outside. I like that idea. Uh, for the flamingos, consider a viewing platform in the shape of, of a rotunda. I think it would uh, look cool. Uh, the uh, tropical house is tricky. I wouldn't mind waiting for some squares to be unlocked until you have... Um, 
until you have proper space to build it. Um, a restaurant's not needed, in my opinion. Uh, once the park connects, it will be fine. Yep, I totally agree with that. Um, how I see the Tropic House will be more towards the original park. Uh, the flamingos on the right towards parking B. Uh, there'll be room at the top of the squares that we have unlocked at the moment. I was thinking that it would make an insect house. Um, it would take up. It, it wouldn't take up too much space and add some animals to the park. My last point, uh, Berenzine also said, but I feel the same way. The comments should fuel your creativity, not limit it. So no pressure and family first. Uh, comment came out longer than expected. Um, yeah, do you know what? Some really, really fine points there. Um, you know, we'll get to Berenzine's comment uh, shortly. But yeah, it is nice to see that people, I, I think people kind of felt like I was, um, I, I felt a bit burnt out from last episode because, I really was like trying to really aim at the realism and stuff, but um, you know, I, I, I the the build is I'm trying to keep it as close to what you guys are suggesting as possible. I know not everybody's comments get in every single episode, and some of them probably won't make it into the zoo, you know. But I'm trying to give everybody a chance to you know put their best idea forward and then try and implement it. So yeah, I'm glad that people kind of picked up on that. I'm still absolutely loving the series. I don't want anyone to think any uh, any different. Um, it's just obviously some builds just take longer than others. It's just 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 the way the cookie crumbles. But some uh, some great feedback there, great suggestions, and a few of them are actually going to get added to the um you know things to do list i think uh next up we got uh zach prince and there it said i definitely do not think the tropical house as you describe it should be near uh should be should be near to the entrance that near to the oh that is i can't read that near to the entrance uh the one that i frequent the bronx zoo's jungle world has a lot of species variation it's quite large requires its own separate admission ticket most of the animals housed there are native to southeast asia uh, but they could easily be replaced with animals in the game tapirs capuchins jaguars pygmy hippos and eaters a lot of the remaining exhibit animals I view something like this as a larger attraction would be overwhelming right at the entrance. I would use the space you have now for some entrance habitats. Uh, flamingos for sure, maybe some camels or llamas, that's quite cool, uh, to fill in space. If you were to attempt a tropical house this early, the only feasible way to do uh, it justice would be to open up square 11, but I would wait. This is what I was saying. It's a recurring theme this week that people really think we should hold off on the tropical house and build it a bit later on uh, in the build. Uh, Vegan Ice has been in touch personally. I think we should move forward 10 years and unlock squares 11 uh, to 13 to make the large factory habitats, uh, but not build anything uh, there and just have the space sitting there. Top priority should be the entrance plaza for Flamingo Habitat. Of course, I'm sure the most popular vote is not to move forward. But honestly, I think it is necessary to move forward or we will not be able to really bring the factory to life. Also, I think for us to get more to get involved more you could have some of us make community creations for the zoo personally i would love to make some contributions i don't have planet zoo um though uh, this is kind of my way to feel a part of it uh, and it would take some of the load off of you take your time don't overwork yourself also side note to the entrance gift shop look absolutely amazing oh my god but we definitely need to convert maybe squares 21 to 23 in just parking space uh i'm so happy you're experimenting train levels it makes my heart happy yeah i quite like the idea of those um you know those squares being turned into parking um as for the thing with the community uh you guys building stuff to potentially go in the zoo it is a good idea that the trouble with that is is like um you have to have a way of telling me that you've done it um and sometimes youtube will bounce the comment if there's links in it because of the way that i've got the channel sent up uh, so if you do really want to try to maybe contribute something not like what i would say is don't make big buildings or anything like that but maybe the smaller stuff you know like uh, information boards little planters little li the little bits and bobs all the little details now if you do want to make anything like that and you want it to maybe make its way into the zoo what i can say to you now is go into the description box find my discord link click it join it and then what you can do is when you've made it jump into the planet zoo part on my discord and just say dan i've made this for the series link me the steam thing and then i can subscribe to it and you know even even if you don't feel like it's that good at least i might have a blueprint or the basis of something and i can work from it so yeah that is actually a really good idea there from Ve uh, vegan is it might help a little bit and it you know it's another way of you guys getting your little 
you, you know your little touches uh, you know into the project as well uh, John McLaughlin is up next excellent work again Dan everything looks sleek and modern uh, in this build I know you were talking about nocturnal area for the uh, anteater Rudy had a good video on nocturnal house uh, build that you could draw inspiration from I have seen that build it is fantastic and uh, yeah if I ever did uh, anything like that I probably would uh, take a take a look at those episodes again uh, another great reference point um, could be Tropic World at Brookfield Zoo which at the time of its construction was the largest indoor exhibit in America it has assimilated rainforest so every few hours sprinklers on the roof are activated and thunderstorm uh, sounds play uh, you may be able to achieve something along the lines of that for this build uh, either way the interior of of it is pretty remarkable and i'd recommend taking a look at it if you're running into any creative block also congratulations on your daughter arriving soon uh yeah i actually took a look at that great reference points saved a few photos i'm sure that when we do get round to the tropical house it will come in very very handy um primal gamer has got in touch uh it's looking a nice really like the gift shop and plaza area are a couple of suggestions i have uh if you don't have a logo design yet uh i think the mural like animal faces with african lion um african elephant head covered with leaves and flowers um and a couple of paw prints colored three shades of green i think would look nice maybe for the flamingos you could have that be a nice branch off but for different areas of the zoo uh since they come in from many uh so many continents uh, and a lot of zoos have membership entry they normally have a distinct ways to show the different lanes so maybe you could have a uh, sunken in paw prints on the path to show where the members go actually that's a really really good idea i believe i actually did that on my highland zoo series and uh yeah we could probably use something like that in this zoo as well um Next comment comes in from Berenzine. Love the style of the entrance. You were talking about putting the flamingos near the path. Uh, the guests would use to get uh, to the entrance. I think that's a great idea. I've been to a zoo in Sweden uh, where they had a similar idea, but with some kind of ape. Uh, you could see the exhibit before you got into the zoo, and they make a lot of noise. I think a similar strategy could work with the flamingos, just not have something there to block the view. Uh, it would be a nice way to get people excited when walking up to the entrance. Uh, maybe some dense vegetation in the middle of the exhibit could block the view from both sides um, that way people inside the zoo wouldn't be looking at the parking lot and the flamingos uh, could go around uh, around it so you can see it from both sides yeah, it's a really top idea, actually. Uh, also, I wanted to say placing certain animals in certain places in the zoo doesn't necessarily make it more realistic to me. I've been to zoos that had lions uh, as the second exhibit from the entrance, where flamingos were all the way at the back. Zoo in Amersfoort uh, starts with grizzly bears and otters next to each other. Uh, what I'm trying to say is don't let the placement of animals be limited by it maybe not seeming realistic uh seeing what you can do with cool ideas like the tropical house is why we're all here i'd bet and if you think something would look better further back then um then just put it further back i love the involvement we all get in the series but i am here to see you do amazing stuff uh with those ideas comments with fuel your creative creativity not limit it yeah I've, I've you know i've already touched upon it i do really appreciate those comments uh, i really really do um you know it just shows the community care as well I, obviously you're all a bit worried i was maybe a bit burnt out from last episode but uh yeah i think that you know going forward i definitely have to kind of just draw the line with certain things and say you know what maybe it would be better you know in another place but uh, uh next comment coming in from jacoby and they've said as far as drop of grass uh, i really like the one at sedgwick county zoo when i went multiple levels giant ponds dozens of uh, different birds even bats so uh, really nice with good viewpoints and plenty of fences just to enjoy the sounds uh, for the flamingos i would even put in the view area in the entrance plaza something for the kids to look at while mum and dad buy the tickets see there's a recurring theme where the flamingos are concerned people clearly want us to be able to see them as we enter the zoo which is a really interesting concept actually and not one that i'd thought of uh next comment comes in from raven landgraf hello dan i've been watching since episode one uh just have to say uh, once again you have blown me away with the amazing build truly look forward to thursday and sunday as i know there will be uh will most likely be another video from you to watch you are more than welcome my friend um it's an absolute pleasure to be honest to make the episodes be playing the game and you know making it with all of your guys help uh, as for the tropical house i feel that we should wait on uh on it until we have a bit more room as i feel it needs to be um quite a grand build and we shouldn't take away from the entrance uh, i think we should go ahead with flamingos maybe even some peacocks as for the empty planter in the entrance uh, maybe place a statue of a flamingo or peacock each side uh, with the zoo sign between the 
between the statues. Keep up the great work. Um, yeah, great stuff. Um, pretty much uh, touched upon a lot of stuff other people have. Um, next comment comes in from Bryn Jones. Uh, well, Dan, once again, you've smashed it. Your attention detail is credible and the creating all those pieces. Uh, in response to the dilemma you, po you posed through the video, I would add some sort of advert on the shop wall. A second person to actually say we should maybe do an advert. Um, above the counters for the dodo or the website social media outlet uh, the figure eight flower patch i would add a modern art sculpture to uh, some sort of rounded off shape with the tropical house um, i feel we need a few more squares to be able to fit it all in um, love the idea of some of the animals um, being able to come in and out um, in my head i imagine chester zoo tropical house with the waterfall with all the with all the pennies um, and the second level but without birds I still feel the idea of the flamingos at the front works. It will make it realistic in the sense of the other big zoos uh, use it to attract people uh, with the sound. And hope the preparation for the new edition is going well. I'm in a similar situation with my with, with a Bambino expected mid-July. Keep safe and keep up. Um, yeah, I, I already congratulated you on the um, little and on the way, my friend. But congratulations once again. We're in the same boat. Um, my little one's due at the end of July. So, uh, yeah, we're both going to be very, very busy, aren't we, uh, my friend? And the last comment this week, ladies and gents, comes in from Official Dazzler. And they've said, um, this was a big build. A cinematic when you was talking would have been a call of the build uh, of the building you created. Uh, understand this could be more editing process, but close up uh, imagery of your work really would show a bit more uh to what you've done uh voted no to move forward as there is too much to do right now i'm um, on the subject of cinematics uh, someone else has already brought it up in today's episode um i'm probably gonna do a cinematic sort of every 10th episode the reason for this is that uh, there'll be lots to look at but if people like the ideas of cinematics every episode, um, maybe we could potentially finish with a cinematic of what I've done. And like like Dazzler has said there, give you a bit of a close up on bits and bobs uh, and the stuff that we've done. Because obviously, me taking you around it, you don't see all of the details. You don't see to get, get you don't get to see all of the the little bits and bobs. So yeah, that might that might be an interesting uh, you know thing, ladies and gents. So. Um, that's all the comments done. That's all the feedback read through. So off the back of that, what I'm thinking of starting with, I'm probably going to potentially get through two build parts in this episode. But um, what I'm thinking is the flamingos are definitely going to go down here. We're not going to bother with a restaurant. I think enough people have said, you know, no to the restaurant. And we're definitely not going to be doing the tropical house uh, either. You know, lots of people have said we just we don't really have the room yet. And they don't really feel like the placement so close to the entrance, um, you know, is is you know on the money they don't really feel like that's that's what's going to work maybe it's going to belong in you know one of these bigger squares uh you know over here or or even in this one uh you know up here um but um definitely going to put flamingos down here we're going to need some staff quarters potentially you know maybe a kitchen or something because we're going to need to be able to feed the animals and at the minute our zookeepers would have to walk all the way around uh, to get into the zoo. So we're definitely going to need, you know, some star facilities over here um, to be able to feed the new additions. And then, um, yeah, I guess then up here, we really need to come up with an idea. Obviously, an insect house was mentioned. A rotunda was mentioned. Plazas have been mentioned. So, yeah, I guess... I'll just crack on with the build, see how we go. You know, I think that we, once we get the flamingos in and once I kind of space out a bit of a backstage area, staff lot, I'll know what space I am playing with, you know, up here. So, um, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. I've got lots to finish at the front as well. So, um, yeah, let's get cracking. Without further ado, ladies and gents, let's get to the build part one. So ladies and gentlemen, we are back for the build part one. And as you can see, lots and lots of work has gone down. Um, yeah, we're going to get into this very shortly. But um, Flamingo Habitat is in. We've done some notice boards. Uh, we've done a bit of work at the front I'm going to show you uh, as well. I've been very, very busy. We'll come to the Flamingo Habitat last though, I think. Um, I have still not done any of this down here. I'm still completely undecided on what to do 
I think I know though what I am going to be doing with the zoo sign here now. Whether I um, get it done today probably won't, but um, I've got an idea and I think it is going to work. So not done anything towards the front. Uh, along here, as you can see, we've carried on, you know, just tidying all this up. We've got all of this in. We've got um, this brick wall in now. So that's kind of like going to, you know... Um, keep people out essentially this is the perimeter uh we've got all these fences all put in we bang some trees in and then we get to this point ladies and gents and uh, yeah we've got all the planting done uh both sides now and uh we've got this notice board in now you will notice straight straight from the get-go i've lowered the fence in here um basically i felt like this high fence with a low fence this side just didn't work so i've lowered it both sides and you're gonna see there is a reason there is method behind the madness uh but yeah we've got lower fences now so whatever does end up in here the guests are going to be able to see it as they kind of turn the corner and they're walking into the zoo but yeah i kind of put this um little board in it kind of just points towards sort of like the ticket offices car parks gift shop so on and so on so people kind of know what way um they're going you know when they walk into the zoo but uh yeah if the guests were to turn this corner ladies and gents you're going to see that uh i didn't quite do the windows idea what the, the people were saying because every time i tried to do it it didn't work it it looked a little bit tacky i'm going to be honest with you it didn't really work but i i like the idea of you know being able to get little glimpses into the habitat uh, a lot and so what i did was i put this low fence in uh, and i've just really just gone very very lush with all of the um with all of the foliage here and then on the other side i've done it as well so we've tried to sort of like disguise the fence a little bit but still leave enough room that you'll be able to sort of see through into the habitat and potentially see the flamingos uh so you carry on walking up here ladies and gents and then you're sort of into like the main plaza area um, here now we're not really touched much of this i kind of just put this railing in for the disabled guests when they're leaving the zoo and uh, the other thing that i have done is i put those paw prints in that direct the members to the members entrance which is this one here now i have got to create some sort of sign i don't really want to put it up here uh, i might sort of hang a sign from the back there and just have like members only or something along those lines uh, but yeah we've got these paw prints i think they work really well we've done them in our you know shades of green that are becoming synonymous with the zoo now and um yeah just a few little touches really um, and then we've added you know a few more sort of like planters here with the fences um you work our way around here and we've got another sort of like low fence it then takes you up to a higher one here and this is sort of like staff entry uh now into here i probably do need to put a gate on this um you know here just to separate it and then you've got your double gate that takes you you know in here into your sort of back lot area there ladies and gents but uh, yeah we've got the low fence here because i've done a similar thing to what i've done over here but but you can actually see it a bit more clearer so you know like one of you said in the comments why mum and dad are getting the tickets kids can come over here and uh, yeah they can just stand here take a little look in and uh, you know see the uh, see the flamingos walking about now i've kind of used this like mesh fence because um you know from a lot of the stuff that I was looking at as i do a lot of research every time that i build a habitat this was like very popular to be used uh plants can sort of like grow in and around it and uh, you know you kind of get like a view into there but um it's slightly restricted and that's done on purpose to try and force you into the zoo so you go to the proper viewpoints but uh yeah that's essentially kind of like what we've done where the flamingo habitat viewing points are concerned from the entrance and then uh yeah we enter the um we enter the zoo ladies and gents i've not changed anything in here i didn't get around to doing that wall um, uh, just yet in uh, in the episode what i have done is i've started um you know putting some color though on the wall uh up here i quite like the idea of the advert so i've kind of got to try and make something custom but i think this bit down here uh, i might do what nightclub said and you know just use some color uh to try and change it up a little bit um incorporate that and i think we'll get there i think it'll end up looking um really really nice um but yeah the gift shop nothing's been added uh nothing needed to be done it was it was as good as finished before but um yeah we walk around this way ladies and gents and uh, then we come to this like plaza um area uh you walk in here now and you're going to see a slight change um here we've put a map um you know at the beginning um 
now uh, of the plaza sort of area uh, so that's in there for, for the guests to use and then as you walk up this way um, what I've tried to do is because this is sort of like um, staff area here sort of like staff services I've tried to separate it slightly with these planters and yeah they're big and they're a bit over the top maybe but uh, you know they're densely planted they look really really pretty just beautifying the zoo is a big thing and you know we want to bring a lot of color and life into this side uh, of the zoo and make it very sort of like different to anything we've done before uh, you will see your first sort of like uh, habitat it's sort of education board um, here, ladies and gents. This is just going to be a very basic one. Uh, we'll, you know, put the flamingos uh, stuff on there. And then you come up to the habitat. And so we've done a big viewing area for the flamingos um, this time. I dabbled with potentially doing one that was a bit more raised up, but um, I quite like how this has turned out. And, I'm, I, you know, I, I don't regret my decision in not doing it. A lot of the reason why I didn't do the raised sort of like rotunda sort of um viewing area was because of space it was just you know at a premium and so uh, instead i decided to go with this now you are going to notice that the habitat ladies and gents is very very lush very green lots and lots of vegetation and a lot of this is to disguise stuff uh, we wanted to disguise their hard shelter i wanted to disguise the back fences as much as possible uh, i needed to really disguise this fence and you know take away those viewing angles uh, i think we did a pretty good job you can't see the car parks at all uh, you can barely see the guests and a lot of that is because of the trees and and uh, all the planting that we've put in but uh, plenty of room for the flamingos to walk about and um, you know you can see they've got a very very big pond and it's very dense with the uh, vegetation this time I uh, tried to go a little bit different it is a fake pond because from a lot of the stuff I was looking at the bottoms of them are because they have to be drained to be able to clean be cleaned out but uh, I decided to go with you know some rocks this time some fake rock sort of thing uh, just to kind of like um, you know cover it up a little bit more uh, the rest of it's kind of been covered up with vegetation which is quite nice um, so from the viewing area you don't actually see majority of that sort of concrete um, you know pool We've done it in a slightly lighter color as well uh, to sort of represent sort of like sandy shades um, you know the salt flats and things like that is kind of where you find these flamingos so yeah that's 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 what i've done we'll take a better look at that when we get to the live section and uh, re-release the animals there is like a a slight waterfall here but i'll show you that when we get to the live section as we are going to remain on pause uh, for now and then what i've done is i've just kind of like taken this path all the way around here um, because I've got an idea of what to do here and um, you know you're gonna see it when we get to build part two but I've actually got a little idea of something that potentially might work there and then uh, yeah as you come over here we've got our second sort of like education board and um, yeah I kind of went a bit over the top with this one but um, I just wanted to try something different and I feel like it come out really, really nice. You know, you've got, you know, your levels of sort of like endangerment, uh, you know, if they're critically endangered, that sort of stuff. Lots of information on them. Uh, interactive board here. You can play the stuff, you know, watch some video, for some film. And then this is like uh, sort of like we're going to have these on lots of the animals so that you can um, basically the guests will be able to see if they can find that animal and then tick it off uh, to say they've seen it on their little book that they can get at the ticket office so um yeah just uh just a slight variation on stuff we've done before and um yeah i think it looks really really nice and then um yeah that's kind of it that's kind of what i've done ladies and gents uh the indoor habitat isn't the biggest i am thinking that potentially we're going to need a bit more later on down the line uh, it's very rustic it's just kind of like a wooden um you know lean to kind of building didn't want to go too mad uh this is obviously the door in the reason i've put this door on the side is that if the animals ever need to be taken away to the vets and that sort of stuff um you know they would be easier to be transported out this way um so there will be you know sort of like a road sort of area uh, this is gonna sort of like map out where the back lot area is so all this can be sort of like backstage and a lot of my thinking behind it as well is that we've got the backstage area there and if you follow this path it takes you into that staff building so i guess really 
you know these squares we need to try and carry that back lot area sort of into this area um we are going to have to put a building in here uh in today's episode whether or not you decide it stays or not if we expand on it um we will see when we get to sort of like the live section of today's episode but uh i'm probably going to do that in the build part two part we're going to need sort of like kitchen area to be able to prepare the food for the uh flamingos and we need something over this side um of the zoo as well but um yeah looks pretty cool doesn't it very lush very nice dense vegetation i really like it hope you guys too uh do as well but uh let's get in to the build part two and the last bit of the build in today's episode and so welcome back ladies and gentlemen and uh this is the build part two and the changes i'm gonna be honest very minimal very subtle but um very very important uh, if that kind of makes sense um so we will start up here because i have filled this in now so the front looks brilliant because it's all very very even we've got it all sorted out um this road will make more sense um you know when i kind of like give you my idea on what i potentially think we can do um but this could go to a um, you know staff services a new staff area um you know back roads into the bigger exhibits that sort of stuff um but yeah um, it's all looking pretty good now it's all really really finished off at the front and um, absolutely loving um, loving what we've managed to achieve ladies and gents um, I just changed up the aircon units up the top here as well uh, I think they just look uh, just add a bit more give it a bit more depth look a bit more realistic um, I've added in a few more benches uh, now I think this is going to be quite a busy area I'm going to be honest with you uh, based on everything um, that we've done I don't think I've done that much more around there but uh, yeah the big bit that I've kind of done um, you know for this part of the episode uh, is this uh, first and foremost we've done this this is a staff building it's essentially just a kitchen ladies and gents but i did say we were going to need a big kitchen building uh, to really kind of like deal with all of the animals that we've got and so as you can see we've got a nice big kitchen in here now we're going to be able to feed all the animals um you know keep up to date with everything that's going on uh, with them and it's going to be able to service loads and loads of the animals needs which is great uh, and what i've done is i've done it in a very similar style to that of the you know staff hq uh, that we've built over there uh, very very you know tiny building um a pretty basic build it actually went together relatively quick which was nice but uh yeah you can sort of see it from the car park um not not massively but you can kind of see it there from the car park but it's one of the big reasons why we needed to get that wall in basically to kind of uh you know separate the two areas this wall would probably actually be carried on uh down the back of the car park and up to join up with that wall there as and when we as you know potentially get these squares unlocked at a later date uh, i've had to put a little power point in here because we were lacking power um you know whether or not we disguise that in another building if you think we need more you know down here um, you know feel free to throw your suggestions at me what i was thinking you know personal point of view is that we potentially just do a little power station like this to disguise it uh you know next to the building that we've got um maybe in here and i think that maybe just caught a sort of finish off this backstage area then uh but yeah essentially the staff can get in and out now which is great to see uh so uh those are them two bits and then the last bit that we need to cover ladies and gents is this little area here so i kind of someone mentioned obviously conservation wall and we need one in this part of the zoo obviously we're going to get inundated with um you know with people wanting to go on there the, the longer the series goes on the more i find that people are getting involved so i needed more space uh the other conservation wall is going to be finished off very very shortly uh, but now we've got a new one i can make sure i can get every single person's name um up on the walls and uh, really finish this off now so that's one of the reasons why i've done this and it kind of uses this space up really really nicely so my thinking behind it was that this wall here is where all the names are going to go and then we've got these little water fountains that come up and you know the kids can even run in and that sort of stuff you know playing the playing the little fountains and stuff um we've got the little drain for it to drain off we've got this little ridge here to stop the water going over the top but uh yeah it's just using those colors of green once again those shades looks really really nice um the thing i want to ask you though where this is concerned is do you think we should do it in a similar style to what we've got over in the other 
part of the um, conservation park or do you think because this is a bit more modern over here we do it in a different style so you know maybe let me know in the comment section below what you make of it ladies and gents but yeah the build part two really subtle i just kind of added a bit more vegetation in here finished up loads of stuff oh and the other bit this is the other bit i need to show you is um yeah this basically a statue now uh in the in the front of the of the uh zoo now my thinking behind it was lots of people were saying potential water fe a feature a statue um just just you know something for the front uh is what we really need to do potentially some flower beds so i've just matched the flower beds up either side and then um this is on the workshop it's very different i deleted the base that was on it but uh this is on the workshop and basically it's it's like an elephant made out of natural materials and my thinking behind it was that potentially with all the you know trees and stuff that all got you know removed out of the way for us to be able to build this they salvaged some of those gave them to like an artist and he built this sculpture and uh, they decided to you know put it on display in the front of the conservation park so this is beautiful sort of like um you know rugged sort of like natural wooden elephant and uh, yeah we've we've placed it prime location in the front uh, area of the conservation park and i think you know if you're looking from the car park and that i just think it looks really really special i think elephants are an animal that eventually will probably get in the zoo and i just think it really really fits ladies and gents but uh, yeah let me know what you think let, let me know if you you like my thinking behind it if you think it fits in um you know obviously completely understand if you if you don't think we should have that there if you don't really think it fits but um yeah that's what that's what i've put in there and yeah like i say it was very very little in the build part two but um you you know it was very very important at the same time but uh now ladies and gents we get to do something very very exciting something we ain't done in a while and that is a live section and we are back ladies and gents for the live section of today's episode and we start at the original part of the conservation park uh the reptile center um not much work's been done over here there are a few little jobs i actually need to do and i might do them between episodes just to kind of save a little bit of time but uh, yeah, we are back here because we're going to do some animal management, ladies and gents, because, um, you know, it will have been a while since uh, we've been able to do that. So let's take a little look at how the animals are doing uh, and where we lie with them. We're still waiting for loads of these young, uh, you know, tortoises to come of age so that we can move those onto the wild or potentially other zoos and stuff. The same with the Galapagos tortoise and the definitely the same with the gharials. We really, really need them to mature uh, sometime soon but um as far as the gear monsters are concerned i think there's only one that we need to move on into the wild so um yeah we will release that to the wild then we will take a look at um we'll take a look at the frogs now they've been a lot more busy than the gear monsters as we can all see uh, so we'll move all of these real real young ones off into the wild so that will leave us with five it should always leave us with five uh, so we're going to move those off into the wild ladies and gentlemen um, then we're going to take a look at the goliath frogs because i think they've been getting busy as well so uh yes we're going to have two goliath frogs making their way off into the wild um, and then i believe that is it and you're going to see there's already some flamingos on the list i basically wanted to save myself some time in today's episode um so that's what i've done there so yes that's all that done uh ladies and gentlemen something else that i would just want to show you if i can find her is that we did get ourselves a female peacock um obviously we couldn't find one could we when we were adding those a couple of episodes ago i think that was but i did manage to stumble across a very very nice one so uh yeah she is keeping mr peabody uh company now in this part of the uh zoo so let's head on over ladies and gents to the flamingo habitat and introduce our latest animals um to uh to the zoo basically so um yeah we've got four i found some really really nice ones one male three females i think that's a, a you know a nice little starting point that you can have a lot of these basically and i think um that's what we're going to be going for um so we can probably we have to wait basically until they get over here now the thing i'm a little worried about as it begins to rain and pour in the zoo is that um they're going to have to run up the street and up here and then all the way around to get into the zoo to bring these up here. So we could be waiting a little while, ladies and gents. But uh, 
while we're waiting and you can't really see stuff in all of its glory can you when it's uh, raining cats and dogs like this but um nice to see that we've got plenty of cover though um is that uh yeah i'd actually made a little waterfall in here um to, to this is because this is like a foraging pool um and i really wanted to sort of uh, implement that into the build uh so i've actually done it so that the water kind of gently runs off the top down into the water below and uh yeah you kind of get this sort of like mini waterfall effect and um yeah i think it's quite nice sets it off really really nice we could do with it stop raining now couldn't we ladies and gents this is not what we wanted to see in the live episode is this driving rain but it is october so um yeah no surprise uh, i am just going to let you know about a year went by during the course of the build uh last episode and this one i was having to press the play button because when you're making fountains and stuff you need to press play to make the water work same with waterfalls uh so you can see what direction the water's moving and that sort of stuff um so yeah i had to press the play button unfortunately it is uh it is what it is um but um yeah it's uh it's not going to hurt us too much one year didn't really make too much money off the back of it as you can see we spent another 30 odd thousand uh with this bit with this build here uh getting all this in and getting this finished up i'm sure it's going to add you know some more um you know losses because obviously we're going to have more expenses uh that sort of thing um once we get these um once we get these guys in we will definitely put their uh food to type two to match the rest of the zoo and as for any of the shops uh it's all been matched up uh, i think i've already said that the prices have all been synced so the prices are the same across the entire zoo and it does look as though we're going to get our first flamingo ladies and gentlemen um they're probably not going to want to go outside what with it pouring with rain and there you have it ladies and gents we have a flamingo we are officially doing this zoo uh, in another direction other than reptilians. Um, so yeah, first and foremost, let's change the uh, food to grade two. It was already on grade three. I have no idea why that was, but we're doing grade two for now across the zoo. And then we need to do all of this education. We just need to get all this sorted out um, to make sure um, that we've got all this set up. Um, and there you have it ladies and gents officially we have flamingos in jammy conservation park uh all the uh all of this is all set up and uh yeah they've actually managed to get them all over it pretty quick um that flamingo is running straight into the deep end that was pretty crazy the way that come out come into the habitat like a bat out of hell um and i think we're looking pretty good ladies and gents that's three of the four in here so far um yeah we're waiting on one more and we're gonna wait we are gonna wait in the live section for that last member of our new flamingo colony um yes yeah, lovely 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 really really good to see and i actually really love the look of the habitat with the flamingos in now um you know we've done this very shallow on purpose up here they do wade through the shallows um and so and then we've done this end a bit deeper uh, so the guests can sort of see through here and see uh, the flamingos in action um where is this last flamingo or are they all in here let's just double check shall we uh zoo animals trade center we're still waiting we're still waiting on this bad boy to be moved over and i think someone's just got it now yes they have get in there beautiful stuff and they're now going to have to run it all the way over. It is a hell of a trek. So uh, I think when we get to unlocking the squares, we're definitely going to have to try and concentrate on joining the two uh, zoos up. Now, a uh, quick little thing before we finish today's episode is, uh, you know, obviously you're going to get told to do all your usual stuff. But as you can see, uh, we didn't fill this space in here. Now, what I do want you to do is ignore this piece of path. Um, we are not keeping that. We just got it in here for now uh, while we're just getting the 
uh, flamingos into the habitats that we've got these animals in here raring to go looking lovely in the new place now uh, you're going to see an image up on your screen now ladies and gents now that is swan plaza um, from a zoo that i believe john mclaughlin sent in to me maybe two or three episodes ago it's been something on the sort of like waiting list of uh, you know things to consider things that we could potentially build um, in the zoo now um, this space here i'm really at a loss at what to do and now now, off the back of looking at you know John's comment again, um, I think that we could put a beautiful sort of like rotundary type design in here, a sort of area where guests could go, you know, to take a take a sit down, potentially even eat eat their lunch and stuff, um, you know, uh, you know, because once we get joined up, we're going to have this restaurant, we're going to have the. Uh, ice cream shop there and stuff so potentially sit down take a take a load off and eat their food but what i'm thinking is that as you can see from that image um you know there there's um there's like buildings where uh you know guests can you know have weddings um and stuff like that um and they're to the back of that building and what i was potentially thinking is we're going to have guest services probably in here we could have that up here um, some some buildings for that sort of stuff um you know where people could have you know you know functions and that sort of stuff and we could potentially have that in here we could have a little rotundary type thing in here it could all be disguised behind some bushes and things um and then this this road could actually come up and it could come off and we can actually have a small car park here so that it could be used for events and functions and that sort of stuff and i actually quite like that idea of John's and potentially putting something like that in here. And then off the back of it, I was thinking of like a really nice like pond or a lake or something like that. And then off the back of that lake is where, you know, the zoo is. So, you know, it's disguised behind some, you know, behind some hedging and, you know, beyond, you know, a, a lake and stuff. So you're never really on top of it, but you can kind of see it in the distance. I just think something like that might be quite cool. So potentially in this space, we could make that sort of rotundary type thing uh to really sort of like set this area off but uh yeah i think i'm gonna wrap today's episode up now because um it's gonna be very very long otherwise ladies and gents but that's my thinking let me know what you make of that uh suggestion and because there is the space there continue to get your suggestions in uh, obviously i've got loads and loads of comments there I've taken all the best bits from them. It's all been added to the lists of things to do, things that we want to see in the zoo. Uh, so don't worry, they're not being ignored. There's lots and lots of work to do, ladies and gents. But uh, yeah, why I potentially uh, tell you all the bits and bobs that you need to know, we're just going to take a look at the flamingos, all enjoying a dip, ladies and gents. Uh, so yeah, first and foremost, we need to talk about poles, don't we? Uh, you're going to see it above now, my friends. Do we move forward in years? Simple yes or no answer. And uh, it will see what happens with uh, next episode in mind uh, but yeah just vote on that poll we vote every single episode um, you know even if you don't, don't want to see us move forward we don't have to uh, you might think there's still plenty of work to be done but uh, yeah if you think we need to open up a new square uh, you know to really you know help us move forward then be sure to let me know so a simple yes or no answer on the poll of do we move forward in years ladies and gents and I guess if we do move forward then you need to pick a square and uh, yeah you're gonna see all of the numbers on the screen now it's a simple you know let me know in the comments if you say yes which square you would pick and which one you would like to unlock uh, next episode if we are to move forward but uh, that is us done and dusted ladies and gentlemen a pretty quick uh, live section in today's episode um, you know uh, apologies if it was a little bit too quick and uh, yeah just just basically keep on in that comment section getting your great ideas getting your great feedback and uh, the other thing as well let me know you know all the bits and bobs that have come up in today's episode what you think of them you know would you like to see more cinematics would you like uh, me to try and do different things where the editing is concerned um, you know would you like to get involved if you would uh, follow the discord and all that good stuff but my friends we are done and dusted for another episode of jamming conservation park so you need to do all of the good stuff hit the subscribe button if you're new hit the like button if you've enjoyed it hit the bell notification button to never miss an episode and uh, my friends as i've already said you can find my socials and the discord in the comment section below and as our first guests come and take a look at the flamingos we are going to say goodbye from today's episode you make sure you're staying extra and i'll see you real soon <laughs>